All right, viewers, uh, after what we've seen go down in the state of West Bengal politically, there was furor, there was uproar of people, Kada, affiliated with the BJP being targeted. Now, some women have come out and approached the Supreme Court of what they say were retribution rapes. Violence, vandalism, arson. The eruption was instantaneous. Just minutes after Mamata's huge victory in Bengal, these were the scenes in the state. Amidst the violence, allegations of sexual violence and gang rape also erupted. Allegations that quickly sank amidst a ferocious war of words between the victorious Trinamool and the new opposition BJP. And now, over a month later, fresh, horrific details of alleged gang rape have emerged. With multiple women from Bengal, including a minor girl, moving Supreme Court, seeking a detailed probe into what they call a wave of revenge rape by the ruling party. As the Supreme Court is looking into the issue of post-poll violence in West Bengal, a chorus of complaints has come up regarding allegations of sexual assault by people who are said to be TMC workers. At least three applications have been filed in the Supreme Court by women claiming to have been victims of such rape and gang rape by TMC workers as their family members support the opposition party. Last month, when separate but similar allegations had emerged, the Trinamool and the Bengal police had dismissed them outright, calling some of them even fake. One of the new applicants, a 60-year-old woman, has detailed horrors starting the 3rd of May, saying her house was surrounded by a large mob of Trinamool supporters and loud threats hurled at her, asking her family to leave the house. She says her daughter-in-law was mercilessly beaten at midnight, five Trinamool workers forced their way in, slapped, beat and tied her to her bed and gang-raped her in front of her six-year-old grandson. A separate plea alleges that a group of four men dragged two girls into a nearby jungle where they assaulted the 17-year-old and raped them one by one for more than an hour. The plea states that they were attacked and gang-raped solely for their family's political affiliations and religious beliefs. In her plea before the Supreme Court, the 17-year-old alleges that she was sent to a child welfare home and wasn't allowed to meet her family. Similar allegations have been made in a plea by a 19-year-old woman. The petitions have sought transfer of the investigation in their cases to a special investigation team to be conducted outside Bengal. See, the girls need to come out. The girls need to say, if the girls fear to come out, then we can't make up the story because people will say that we have made up the stories. So that is where we are lacking. There is such existence of any litigation which is subjudice. It is not proper to make any comment thereon because the Honorable Supreme Court is dealing with that matter. The Bengal government on May 25th had informed the court that a five-judge bench of the Calcutta High Court had already taken cognizance of the issue and was hearing pleas for an SIT investigation. The state government also claimed that FIRs had been registered and arrests had begun to be made. However, the National Human Rights Commission had informed the court that an internal report had been filed by its committee which indicated that there were serious violations of human rights. The matter is expected to be heard by the Supreme Court on Tuesday. <laughs> With Anisha Mathur, Bureau Report, India Today. All right, viewers, let's shift focus right now to the state of Kerala. And the latest coming in from there is that Sister Lucy, to jog your memory, she was the one who had protested against accused, rape accused, Bishop Mulakal. Well, she has been refused by the Vatican to provide any relief to Sister Lucy. 
The Vatican has rejected her appeal against expulsion from the Catholic Church on the charges of indiscipline and failing to give a satisfactory explanation for her lifestyle in violation of Vatican rules. Sister Lucy is being punished by the Vatican for her participation in demonstrations against Bishop Franco Mulaco, who is accused of raping a nun. Sister Lucy has now got a letter from her congregation saying that she should vacate the convent room within a month as the Vatican court has dismissed her appeal. While speaking to India Today, Sister Lucy said that action against her is not based on facts. She also says that her appeal before the Supreme Court Council of Vatican is still pending. produced last year a letter in the month of May and that oh, letter oh ma'am oh ma'am uh, from the Supreme Court, a Supreme Tribunal. But they cannot to produce a letter like that before the trial in the court. But they produced it for the sake of the superiors of the FCC, I think. And mm. now they got it out because they uh, made a drama now here because uh, they are telling that uh, okay. according to the court verdict, you are out and the Supreme Tribunal is rejected your letter like that they told. Mm. But it is a lie, a complete lie. They are saying not truth. They are not saying the truth so uh, what is happening uh, i will discuss my advocate and uh, she hasn't uh, talked about me uh, about the topic or to me so far the trial is started or it is going on but no uh, it is not completed okay. anyway she told me she has uh, sent an email to me with uh, the other letters also okay. that letter is the particular letter from the supreme tribunal is produced on 2021 may 27 she says Okay. But it is not fact. And she says that within one week after you receive the letter, you will be uh, move out. There is no excuses. You should go out and uh, we will not give you anything. We will not consider you as a servant of our community also, our congregation also. Next steps, we will go to the court and we will make you force you to go out. Like that she gave me a letter too. Okay. So are you planning to move out at this juncture? No, no, no. Never, because now already I started given a file in the court. All right, now this is for all the anxious uh, aspirants who were to sit for the class 10 board exams because now board exams are cancelled. But the Central Bureau, uh, the Central Board of Secondary Education, the CBSE, is now coming up with a criteria for assessment of class 12 students. India Today has learned that uh, it will be out by Thursday the 16th or the 17th of June and uh, the students whose final exams were cancelled may be judged by their performance in pre-boards and also according to their scores in class 10th and 11th. A committee set by the CBSE under Education Ministry is learned to have zeroed in on the performance in various exams as a key factor in deciding the results. Remember Delhi Deputy Chief Minister Manish Sisodia in a letter to Union Education Minister Ramesh Pokhriyal Nishank has given the same suggestion. Sisodia said that since most of the theory exams are of 70 marks each, there should be 30 marks weightage for pre-board exams and 20 marks each for class 10th and 11th. The remaining 30 marks can be allotted for practical exams. All right, let's get you the latest developing political news uh, in Bihar. It seems that Chirag Paswan is facing an all-out rebellion after he took charge of his party, the LJP. Five out of six LJP MPs will reportedly meet with the Lok Sabha speaker today and demand that they be recognized as a separate unit and not as part of LJP. The revolt is being unsurprisingly led by Chirag's uncle, Pashupati Kumar Paras, who's spoken out time in and time again against his nephew. Paras has now taken over the parliamentary party leader, effectively outfoxing Chirag. In an attempt to quell dissent, Chirag visited his uncle's house in Delhi but was made to wait for 25 minutes at the gate. He was then allowed in only to be told that his uncle wasn't at home. Chirag is facing his biggest leadership crisis as these rebel MPs have demanded a change in party leadership and have also said that LJP must be a part of NDA in Bihar and work with Nitish. सभी लोगों की इच्छा थी कि हम 2014 में एनडीए गठबंधन के पार्ट बने और इस बार के भी विधानसभा चुनाव में हम एनडीए गठबंधन के पार्ट बने रहें बिहार में एनडीए गठबंधन कमजोर हुआ और लोग जनसंख्या की पार्टी बिल्कुल समाप्ति के कगार पर चला गया हमारे दल में छह विधायक छह सांसद हम लोग हैं 
पांचों सांसद की इच्छा के छह महीने से कि हमारी पार्टी का अस्तित्व खत्म हो रहा है अपने पार्टी को अब बचा लीजिए तो मैं पार्टी तोड़ा नहीं हूँ मैं पार्टी को बचाया हूँ आदरणीय जो सांसद है हाजीपुर से श्री पशु पारस जी वो पहले से भी नाराज चल रहे थे काफी दिनों से नीतीश जी के संपर्क में बने हुए थे और नीतीश जी ने और उनकी पार्टी शुरू से ही लोजपा को तोड़ने में लगी हुई है और लगातार संपर्क में उनके नेता जदयू के वरिष्ठ नेता श्री ललन सिंह जी लगे हुए थे पार्टी को तोड़ने के लिए और बहुत सारे लोग लगे थे हमारे नेता वही रहेंगे चिराग पासवान ही रहेंगे हम लोग लोजपा से हैं और हम लोग उन्हीं को नेता मानते हैं Alright, let's move across now to the state of Telangana. The chief minister of the state is in a bit of a soup. Primarily, why? Because K. Chandrasekhar Rao wants to splurge on fancy vehicles for his bureaucracy, all at a time of a pandemic. Questions are, of course, being raised. Not one. Not two, 32 luxury cars in all. These Kia Carnival MUVs lined up at Telangana Chief Minister K. Chandrasekhar Rao's residence for a review. The cars are being assigned to assistant collectors across the state. Each of these has cost the taxpayer 30 lakh rupees. The expenditure of around 9 crore 60 lakh rupees during the pandemic has come under severe criticism from the opposition. The PRS government led by Mr. Kalvakuntla Chandrasekhar Rao is completely responsible in handling public money. In this uh, financial crisis times, Mr. Kalvakuntla Chandrasekhar Rao has the audacity to buy 32 Kia cards um, for his 32 additional collectors. Like a king, Mr. KCR is giving Nazarana to these collectors. It appears only to allure them and then make them as mere spectators to the misdeeds and misgovernance of Mr. KCR. This splurge of public money is happening in the midst of a global pandemic while the common people, poor people are dying out of debt burden of COVID-19 hospitalization. At a time when hospital beds and ambulances are the need of the hour, the Telangana government has been caught splurging money on these luxury cars. Anti-corruption activists have also called out the government for wasting money. They argue the funds could have been used to bolster the COVID fight, which is the real priority. The clear message that uh, Mr. CM, uh, KCR, continues to send to people in the state is that he has absolutely no regard for, uh, uh, you know, the position that he holds and uh, no respect for uh, the priorities of the people at large. The Telangana government has often found itself in controversies earlier too over extravagant purchases. The KCR administration had earlier provided Toyota Innova Krista vehicles to bureaucrats and Toyota Fortuners to the police department for their use. The chief minister himself has come under criticism in the past for renovations and air conditioners at his residence. With Ashish Pandey in Hyderabad, Bureau Report, India Today. All right, let's get you the latest right now in the world of tennis. Novak Djokovic, after winning his 19 Grand Slam titles, also warmed hearts by a very, very sweet gesture. Take a look. For most, just to be present at Roland Garros to witness Novak Djokovic play in the final would be a memory of their lifetime. Imagine what would it mean to someone if he leaves the arena with a racket from Djokovic. After his 19th Grand Slam title, Djokovic walked up to a kid and gifted the very racket which fetched him his second French Open title. The boy was obviously over the moon and his celebrations were more emphatic than even Djokovic. But when it comes to getting something from the best, one has to earn it and the young boy did his best to return home, return home with that souvenir. Uh, well, I don't know the boy, but um, he was in my ear the entire match, basically. Especially when I was two sets to Ulov down, 
he was encouraging me. He was, he was actually giving me tactics as well. He was like, hold your serve, get an easy first ball, and then dictate, uh, go to his backhand. Like, he was coaching me, literally. Uh, and, and so I thought I found that very, very cute and very nice. And uh, um, so, you know, I, I felt like it was, uh, the, 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 it, it, you know, to give the racket to, to, to the best, best person was him uh, after the match. So that was kind of my gratitude for him sticking with me and supporting me. Certainly, the world number one Serb is a people's champ and knows how to entertain his fans, both on and off the court. Sports Bureau, India Today. Welcome back, viewers. You're watching a fact check segment where we bust certain claims masquerading to be facts on social media platforms and WhatsApp groups. Now, there was an image floating about suggesting that Prime Minister Modi changed four outfits to meet four different leaders. Untrue. The fact check on that, it was a meeting that was scheduled on four different days with four different leaders. So therefore, the Prime Minister was in four different attires. It did not happen in the same day. With that quick fact check, time for us to wrap up this edition of 7 at 7. But do stay tuned. Up next is To The Point.